Hi, welcome back. In the last class, I gave you an overview regarding the different types of accumulators, their constructional aspects, their applications. Now, in today's class, we move on to a very important topic called as actuators. In actuators, there are two types. One is the linear actuator and the second type is the rotary actuator. In today's class, exclusively, we are going to deal with the linear actuators, that is nothing but cylinders. Actuator is a device which can perform the mechanical work. In some cases, actuator provides linear motion as in the case of hydraulic cylinder. In some cases, actuator provides rotary motion in case of motor. So now in today's class, we are going to explore the different types of actuators, in particularly the linear type. So this is the topic I am going to cover that is uh, introduction to hydraulic actuators and hydraulic cylinders. So this is the topics which I am going to cover. The first one is related to actuators. Second one is classification of hydraulic actuators, mounting arrangements and cushionings. Special type of cylinders because they come under cylinder come under linear actuators. Problems on cylinders, the last topic after this. Symbols used for representing linear hydraulic actuators. Now, what is the objective of st this today's class? The first objective is very primarily to explore different types of hydraulic actuators which can be used for uh, new in power, power engineering applications, fluid power engineering applications. To study various constructional features of hydraulic cylinders because in hydraulic actuators we have two types, cylinders and motors. So, in this class we are going to dedicate only for hydraulic cylinders. To solve numerical problems on cylinders, to represent cylinders using symbols. This is the topic I am going to cover, hydraulic actuators under that cylinders. In the next class, I am going to cover same hydraulic actuators part 2 motors. So, this is the overview. So, actuators we are using in daily life, particularly with respect to fluids, we are using motors, we are using hydraulic cylinders. So, what are, what are these actuators? Actuators are basically prime movers which are used to transfer fluids. They interact with the fluid and they produce mechanical motion. The mechanical motion may be linear motion or it may be a rotary motion. These actuators are exactly reverse of pump because actuators are the power developing devices whereas pump are power absorbing devices. The amount of power developed depends upon certain important factors like flow rate, the pressure drop across the actuator and its overall efficiency. The overall efficiency in turn is a function of two important efficiency that is volumetric efficiency and mechanical efficiency. The hydraulic actuators are devices used to convert pressure energy of the fluid into mechanical energy. <coughs> So, if the fluid flow is occurring, what happens? That pressure created in the actuator is uh, utilized to perform useful work. So, sometimes it may be a linear motion as in the case of cylinder and a piston, the piston reciprocating and uh, providing the linear motion or 
in some cases it may be a rotary motion as in the case of motor. <coughs> some classifications of actuators, very important one. <coughs> we have this actuators. So, if an actuator provides linear movement, it is called as linear actuators. If the actuator provides rotary movement, it called as rotary actuators. In turn, the linear actuators family involves or comprises of hydraulic cylinders. As you know, name itself suggests that hydraulic cylinder has two important parts. One is the cylinder itself, another one is the reciprocating piston. For rotary actuators, as the name itself suggests, it has complete rotation or partial rotation. Under rotary actuators, we include hydraulic motors. Moving on. Depending upon the type of actuation, the hydraulic actuators are classified as follows. Hydraulic cylinders or it is linear actuators. The main movement in hydraulic actuators or linear actuators are plunge and retract. So, what I mean to say is the piston reciprocates inside a stationary cylinder. That cylinder may be horizontal aligned or vertically aligned. So, the piston will also becomes correspondingly gives the movement in an horizontal direction or in a vertical direction. The push and the pull force is exerted by the piston. So, in terms of fluid power engineering, we call it as plunge and retract. So, retract is the pull and plunge is extension. So, this it provides linear movement of the piston inside the cylinder. In some cases, hydraulic motors are considered as rotary actuators. They provide complete rotary motion. In some cases, there may be partial rotation. They do not cover complete 360 degrees, but in the majority of the cases, they complete the cycle. They give complete rotation. So, these two are the major category under which all the actuators are involved. So, coming to the first type that is the linear hydraulic actuators, what we call it as cylinders. As the name itself suggests that it is linear movement that is the reciprocating movement of the piston that is called as linear movement. So, the movement of the piston from inner dead center to outer dead center in case of horizontal cylinders or from TDC to BDC or visa versa in case of vertical cylinders. This is considered as linear movements. They are usually referred as cylinders, ramps and jacks. So, based on the application. Basically, the function of hydraulic cylinder is to convert the hydraulic power into linear mechanical force or motion. Sometimes, these hydraulic cylinders are very useful, they are very compact, they provide the plunge and the retract motion or what we call it as simply in terms push and pull motion, which can be used to drive any mechanism or application in a linear path or a straight line path. Some of the types of linear hydraulic actuators include the classification you can see linear actuators type, single cylinder, single acting cylinders, double acting cylinders, double rod cylinder, tandem cylinder, telescopic cylinders. So, basic five variations are there and the first 
and the last one, one more uh, cylinder available, cushion cylinders. So the first three is categorized as basic cylinders, the remaining three is special cylinders. So both are available depending upon the application we can adopt these cylinders. So let us explore one by one what are all these cylinders, how they work, what is the constructional aspects of these cylinders. So first one is single acting cylinders. So, the single acting cylinder as you can see in this schematic diagram comprises of a cylinder, in this case this is an horizontal cylinder, one extremity is called the inner dead center and other extremity is called as the outer dead center. The piston reciprocates from inner dead center to outer dead center or from outer dead center to inner dead center. So, this cylinder is stationary, it is having two ports, one is for inlet another one is for outlet. So, the movement of the piston we can see from one dead center to another dead center creates a stroke. So, the this is forward stroke which we call it as extension stroke and this is return stroke which is called as retraction stroke or sometimes in layman's language we call it as push and pull. So, a spring is attached to, re, to enhance retraction. So, that retraction is very fast. So, a spring is attached. So, this is called as single acting cylinder. The name itself suggests that it is called single acting because the entire events like suction, delivery, etc. takes place on one side of the piston. So, the other side is empty and only on the front side of the piston these events are happening or at the other side if you take this cylinder. So, on the right side and on the left side. So, on the right side all the events are acting, on the left side no events are acting. So, that is why this is called as single acting cylinder. This is the first basic configuration. But the capacity of this cylinder is limited. So, this is the pictorial view of single acting cylinders. So, now let us move into this working principle of single acting cylinder. You can see this single acting cylinder how it is working, it is compressing, compressing the fluid and as it compresses the pressure increases and the fluid is released, right. You can see how the piston is reciprocating forward and backward. So, this movement is called extension and that movement is called retraction. So, that rod is attached to the piston mutually perpendicular and also this is spring enabled, spring loaded. So, the spring will enable easy retraction of the piston, right. So, so this you can see how fluid is compressed. So, it is a very simple mechanism and in fact, the first hydraulic cylinder invented so far. So, you can see the movement, it is just reciprocating. Since the piston is connected to the rod, the rod will elongate as well as retract, extension and retraction. So, let us move on to the next type that is double acting cylinder. So, this is single acting, this is double acting. So, as the name itself suggests that it is double acting, it is having the same constructional aspects of single acting, but this time what is the change is the entire events will occur on both the sides of the piston. What I mean to say is if you call this as the free end and if you call this as the rod end. So, how do we define free end and rod end? So, to the piston where no rod is attached, it is called as free end, to the piston where rod is attached it is called as rod end. So, the entire events occur on both the side of the piston. So, in the one cycle, first cycle it occurs in the free side and on the second cycle it occurs in the rod side, right. So, you can see extension and return stroke. So, the, the, uh, the free side is putting an extension stroke and on the 
rod end side it is putting the return stroke. Of course, two ports are available for transporting the fluid at higher pressure from lower pressure. Whereas, the same components are there cylinder, piston, rod. Only thing is events are happening on both the sides of the piston on the left side and on the right side. If case of vertical engine on the top side as well as bottom side. So, you can see the extension stroke, you can see that the piston is moving away, the pump is the pressurized fluid is entering into the uh, chamber where free space is available and on the free side of the piston it is pushing the piston. So, extension is taking place. So, this is first cycle. In the second cycle what is happening is there is roll reversal, the pump and the return flow is altered, it is interchanged and now pump that is high pressurized fluid is entering into the piston side and it is pushing the piston away from the this side. So, retraction is taking place. So, for this to happen we need to have the services of direction control valve. So, direction control valve will make sure that the pump flow and the return flow they flap their ports. So, this is the pictorial view of a double acting cylinders. Double acting cylinders are as the name itself suggests they are having double the capacity compared to single acting cylinder and they can give more power compared to single acting cylinders. So, you can see the working principle of a double acting cylinder. So, you can see that this is a double acting cylinder on both side what is happening is events are happening. So, in case we can provide two rods attached one on the left side, one on the right side to increase the stability right. So, a small improvement has been made in this case. So, a centrally a piston is reciprocating to the left side there is a rod, to the right side there is a rod. Of course, they are symmetrical in nature, rod dimensions are identical. So, on one side compression is taking place in the forward stroke and in the retraction compression is, ta is taking on the other side. So, you can see the fluid it is pressurized. So, extension is taking place, retraction is taking place. Extension is taking place, retraction is taking place. So, both side fluid is acting. So, the spring has been replaced by a fluid air right. For this to happen we need to change the position of the port that is the pump should supply in the first cycle to this side of the piston and to the second cycle it has to supply to this side of the piston. So, we need to change the position of the pump port. So, this is the working principle of double acting cylinders. Double rod cylinder. So, double rod cylinder is as I told you that we have two rods attached and this is done in order to increase the stability of the system. So, particularly this is done for double acting cylinders not for single acting cylinders. So, this becomes a simply supported beam or in other word we call it as double cantilever. So, rest of the operation remains the same. So, this is used for some high power applications. So, you can see the working principle of double rod cylinders. So, you can see this working principle of double rod cylinders. So, this is very compact. So, 
Next, we move on to tandem cylinders. Tandem cylinders, cylinders as the name suggests that we have two cylinder, two pistons acting inside a single cylinder, right? It is something called as nested pistons. So, two identical pistons or twin pistons connected to a common rod and acting inside a, a two integral small cylinders, nested cylinders. What I mean to say is two pistons connected centrally to a common cylinder and they are reciprocating inside a cylinder which is having two chambers, one left chamber and the right chamber. So, this is a single unit, right? So, this is a single unit. So, this is one chamber, this is one chamber or this is one cylinder, this is one cylinder. So, this uh, piston is acting inside this cylinder, I call this as cylinder A and this piston is acting to cylinder B. So, this is a unique uh, configuration where we are having two pistons in place of single pistons. So, you can see the retraction. So, this is extension, but extension or retraction, the they all are synchronized. What I mean to say is piston A and piston B, they collectively perform the extension stroke as well as they perform the retraction stroke. So, they do not move independently or I, what I mean to say is piston A performing extension, piston B performing retraction that is not possible. So, only thing is both they contribute to extension proce process both the piston as same pistons will contribute to retraction process. That is the direction is synced, that is they move in the same direction. So, as you can see. So, this is the schematic. So, tandem cylinders. So, you can see tandem cylinders operation, right. So, this is the opened up view, right. So, this is the opened up view, you can see the cylinder, the cylinder is vanishing, right. So, you can see how it is reciprocating, how it is reciprocating, right. So, this is the piston and the movement of the piston is from the inner dead center to outer dead center, but they all are having the same stroke, that is both are exhibiting the same stroke, that is the forward stroke as well as the reverse stroke. So, you can see the movement, how it is reciprocating forward return, forward return, right. So, this is the cylinder, the cylinder has been removed here in this case to look into the dynamics of the pumps. The next type of special cylinder, tandem cylinder as well as telescopic cylinder as well as two rod cylinders, they are considered as the special cylinders. Whereas, single acting cylinder, double acting cylinder, they are considered as the basic cylinders. Now, telescopic cylinders are available as the name itself suggests that we can have telescopic. So, this you can see, this is a good example for telescopic cylinder. This pointer or the scale what I am uh, using is also a telescopic cylinder. It will elongate, it will elongate, right? It will elongate like this, right? So, I can see the elongation, right? Same times I can compress this, I can compress this. The same working principle. This is nested cylinder, one cylinder nested inside the other cylinder in the order of decreasing diameter, right? And the, the system is assembled in such a way that one cylinder cannot come out from the another cylinder. There is a limit. Beyond that limit, it will not come out, right? So, we can see the working principle of this telescopic cylinder. It increases the length. Gradually, the diameter decreases. So, you can see the what schematic of this uh, what telescopic cylinders, you can see it is having so many small diameter cylinders nested one inside the other, right. We can pull this up or we can push this up, right. So, depending upon the entry of the fluids, if the fluid enters here, it pushes the piston up, right. If the fluid is sucked, or sucked in, 
so it retracts. So, this is the uh, pictorial view of the cylinder. So, this is the pictorial view of the cylinder. They are very compact and you can see the working principle of this telescopic cylinder, how it is working. Once the fluid is pressurized fluid enters into the cylinder, it pushes all the nested cylinders one by one, right. You can see the operation first this cylinder, next this cylinder and this next the inner cylinder, right. So, first the inner cylinder moves followed by the intermediate cylinders, right. So, you can see the movement of the cylinder from one end to another end. This cylinder is very useful where we need to transfer motion for a considerable long distance, right. At the same point of time, we need to have a constraints over the space. So, if the space constraint is there, as well as we need to cover long stroke, this telescopic cylinder is very beneficial. But the main problem with this telescope cylinder is the stroke length should be small as far as possible. It should not be very long, otherwise it results in stability issues. Now, let us move on to certain basic calculations or formulas governing all these cylinders. That is three important terms, force, velocity and power. All these six cylinders, they have to develop a force, they have to provide the velocity and in turn you have to give a suitable power they have to need to transmit power. So, how to estimate velocity, force and power? So, the output force F, the piston velocity V in case of double acting cylinders are not the same for extension and retraction. I have taken the case of double acting cylinder because single acting cylinder is nothing but the extension of or the primitive case of double acting cylinder. So, if I solve double acting cylinder, one of the cases, either of the cases of the uh, double acting cylinder becomes the single acting cylinder. That is, the extension force is greater than the retraction force for some operating pressure. Retraction velocity is greater than the extension velocity for the same flow rate. So, what I mean to say here is, extension and retraction. So, extension is work done by the system, retraction is work done on the system. So, the force supplied by the system should be greater. So, extension force should be greater. At the same point of time, the retraction should be very fast. So, extension should be slow, retraction should be fast. So, moving on in the first scenario, I am going to discuss with force, velocity and power for extension stroke for double acting cylinders. So, if you take this double acting cylinder having a rod, piston and cylinder, so inlet, outlet, so this is the extension, this is the velocity. So, you can see the piston, it is taken out. If you see the piston, very interestingly, during suction stroke, the free end of the piston is subjected to pressure, right. So, it is shaded and shown here. During the extension, the entire piston area which is shown is shaded is exposed, exposed to fluid pressure, right. So, whereas, the rod end is free. So, fluid enters the blank end of the cylinder through the entire circular area of piston A P. So, the entire area is available. Now, we know that force is equal, pressure is equal to force by area. So, if you want to calculate the force, we have 
force is equal to pressure multiplied by area. So, this is the extension force in terms of Newton, pressure in terms of Pascal, 1 Pascal is equal to Newton per meter square, area in terms of meter square. So, direct area you can measure the diameter of the piston and you can calculate the area as pi d square by 4. right? So, that will give you the extension force. Now, what about the velocity? We know that by continuity equation q is equal to a into v or velocity is equal to q by a. So, if the velocity is in extension is equal to meter per second and q is, is the discharge in meter cube per second, area of the piston in meter square, we can calculate the velocity of extension. right? So, velocity of extension you can see here is a function of discharge and it is directly proportional to the discharge and inversely proportional to the area. So, what I mean to say is, if you keep the discharge constant, if you, weigh, if the, if you want to increase the velocity, you have to decrease the area. If the area increases, what will happen? The velocity decreases. So, if we extend the same logic for retraction stroke for double acting cylinders, you can see the process where you have a rod, cylinder and the piston. Now, the reverse on this side the fluid is entering, on the rod side the fluid is entering and it is pushing the watt piston forward. right? So, what is happening? The rod end is subjected to pressure. So, what I mean to say is during retraction only the annular area around the rod that is the net area. How do you calculate the net area? The piston rod, uh, the piston area minus the rod area. So, you have to calculate the piston area, deduct that by rod area, what we call it as net area that is subjected to fluid pressure. It is shown in the shaded portion. So, fluid enters the rod end of the cylinder through smaller annular space between the rod and the cylinder bore, the net area what we call it as AP minus AR. Now, the same logic pressure is equal to force by area or if you want force for retraction pressure into the net area, the net area is AP minus AR. Now, for this reason the <coughs> uh, force of retraction is less because it is multi uh, force is directly proportional to area. So, in the previous case we are complete taking into consideration the complete piston area, but now in this case we are deducting that by the rod area. So, force uh, decreases. Now, velocity. Now, velocity as I told that is the ratio of discharge to the net area. So, in this case we are considering net area. So, net area is less. So, the velocity will become more. So, as I can say that, so in retraction, uh, in extension, the force will be greater, the velocity will be lesser. In retraction, the force will be lesser, the velocity will be greater, velocity of the piston. So, the power, how to calculate the power? The power developed by the hydraulic cylinder is equal to the product of force into piston speed. So, you can find out power in express power, if you know <coughs> in terms of force and velocity or in terms of discharge and pressure. So, two variations are available. If you can measure force, if you can estimate the flow velocity, you can measure power or if you know discharge, if you know pressure, then also you can measure power. Now, after knowing the three important parameters, we need to know about the cylinder ratings. Cylinder rating is very important because we need to specify cylinders for certain applications. So, ratings include size specifications as well as pressure capabilities. So, you need to specify size 
as well as pressure before designing before <coughs> selecting a proper hydraulic cylinders suitable for a given application. The size specification includes the piston bore, rod diameter, stroke length. Pressure capabilities includes manufacturer's pressure ratings, maximum force capabilities. So, all these 5 parameters are required for specifying or choosing a correct cylinders, right. So, not even one should be left out. Bore is the inner diameter of the cylinder. Cylinder features. So, we need to know what are all the additional things or attachments or accessories required for successful working principle of cylinder or successful operation of the cylinders. The basic size rating, pressure capability are not only the things that define the cylinder. We need to look into factors such as whether the cylinder is fitted with seals and cushions, whether there are stop tubes. Rod spacers are provided, ports are available, bleed ports is also there. So, this is port means normal inlet and outlet port. So, inlet and outlet port are functional ports. These bleed ports are used for maintenance aspects. Limit switches are available to control the movement of the piston such that the piston will not overshoot the working range. So, this is the cylinder features along with the pressure capability and the dimensions we have to look into these additional accessories required for smooth functioning of any cylinders. Cylinder mountings. Now, how do we mount cylinders? Some measures are required or some fasteners are required you can have to the piston you can connect spherical rod, this is the spherical rod or you can have a flange type, you can have a clip, clevis clip, you can have clevis threaded, you can have floor type to the floor you can connect by using this bearing type, you can have a trunnion type, so you can rotate the types. So, this is the basic type, so many types of uh, mounting arrangements are available using this you can customize some examples you can see cylinder mounting methods you can see you have front flange so in the front flange you can attach the flange at the front side of the piston rear flange you can see that the flange is applied sub, uh, attached to the rear side of the piston you can use fasteners for attaching so this is the front and the so of course this is this flange is mounted on the base front side and rear side next clevis river rear pivot so this is attached to the rear side and the clevis clip is attached and foot bracket so you can have l shaped foot bracket attached to the front and the rear right this is more stable compared to these three configuration so this foot bracket is very good improvement even side leg is also very improvement you can attach to the sides right so these two are very good stability in terms of stability and intermediate trunnion exactly at the middle we can pivot this cylinders right so in short we can mount cylinders to the foundation by using different uh, techniques one at the front one at the rear and at the base front side rear side base side and middle side so depending upon the application depending upon the space constraints you need to have a suitable mountings next very important thing is hydraulic cylinder cushioning. So, sometimes what happens when the piston is reciprocating inside the cylinder with that to be such a high pressure 
the piston may ram the hydraulic cylinder in such a way that the cylinder end the front end of the cylinder the piston may hit the cover end of the cylinder that is sometimes results in crack of the piston crown so this is used to slow down the piston at the end of its stroke basic elements required for cushioning are you need to have a plunger you need to have an adjustable cushion orifice you need to have a check valve so these three important items you require for cylinder cushioning so we are halting the cylinder at a certain suitable distance away from or a stand off distance away from the front end and the rear end of the cushions so hydraulic cylinder cushions so this is the schematic diagram you can see that so a normal piston is here and we have attached a small plunger at the front side of the piston so rod is there so exactly in line we have a piston and in in line we have a plunger or the more correct term what we call it as the pilot the pilot engages inside this member and prevents the piston directly ramming the cover end of the cylinder so this is retraction moment you can see the plunge moment wherein the piston is completely towards the inner side and you can see that this rear pilot is preventing the piston at a convenient distance stand off distance between the piston face and the cylinder cover so what is happening is the movement is retarded as well as the cover of the cylinder is safe and intact for better understanding let us see this working principle you can see this working principle where you can have a piston reciprocating inside the horizontal cylinder right so this is the rod and this is the plunger or we can call it as the front pilot so it is moving forward 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 and stop so it is not touching the what the cover end of the hydraulic cylinder so nothing will happen to the cover end of cylinder because at a suitable stand off distance this piston is stopped that too slowly so this prevents the ramming of this piston to the cover of the hydraulic cylinder sometimes frequent ramming results in crack in propagation crack formation crack initiation crack uh, propagation because this is a dynamic system so you can see that this is low pressure this is high pressure so now this is high pressure the blue is low pressure now the system becomes completely red means sim completely high pressure hydraulic cylinder symbols the next is hydraulic cylinder symbols because we cannot draw these hydraulic cylinders on the circuit diagram because uh, most of the times we are inserting these symbols onto the circuit diagram so we need to know the different types of iso symbols used to designate these six types of hydraulic cylinders so you can see the symbols here one by one the this symbol is for single acting type so it is very easy to draw so if you put a spring here it becomes spring loaded right so this is double acting so for double acting to differentiate we have to put two marks here on both the sides right so double acting double adjustable cushion so we have put one arrow here so that arrow means you can adjust the stroke so this is a telescopic symbol so one inside the other so this is double acting you can put two marks double acting double rod you put rod on one side as well as on the other side so double acting double cushion 
So, cushion means you put an extended portion both on the inside as well as on the outside. So, this cushion on the outside of the piston or the free side of the piston will take care of the uh, cover side of the piston uh, and the one cushion on the inside on the rod side will take care on the inner side of the cylinder. So, this is a ram. So, ram and piston we need to differentiate between ram and the uh, what the normal piston because ram is having larger diameter compared to the rod. So, pressure intensifiers. So, pressure intensifiers we are having two cylinders tandem uh, cylinders right this is low pressure this is high pressure. So, two pistons will be working. So, hydraulic cylinder symbols. So, you can use these symbols for your circuit and uh, by drawing this inserting this symbol it is self explanatory that you have used this type of special type of cylinder or you have used a basic type of cylinders. Now, after exploring different types of hydraulic cylinders under the category hydraulic actuators, let us summarize of what all we learnt from this class. Actuators and its types, classification of hydraulic cylinders, we learnt mounting arrangements and cushionings. We learnt special type of cylinders and their applications. So, problems and cylinders we are going to cover in the next class. And in this class, we studied symbolic representation of the cylinders. Finally, the takeaway or the outcome. At the end of this course, the student will be able to select hydraulic actuators based on a given application to demonstrate various features of hydraulic cylinders, to solve numerical problems on cylinders that in the forthcoming class, to identify cylinders using symbols or vice versa. Either you can identify the cylinders using the symbol or you can put the symbol in place of the cylinders. Thank you. In the next class, I am going to solve a problem on numerical problems on this hydraulic cylinders.